rather chilly place of thanking God for sunshine and for another day of life. We do so in the presence of a beautiful sculpture, the Sorrowful Mother. The title of this particular mausoleum, a gift of Frank DiNapoli and the family. We're so glad that they are with us to share this day. The statues donated loving memory of his wife, Josephine, and their mom. I'd ask you to pray with me, not only for Josephine that she be at rest, but also for the DiNapoli family, that God will truly touch them, be present to them, and know that they are not alone during this time of party, like all of us who have lost loved ones in our lives. And so in that vein, I'd ask you to join with me now, pause, look into our hearts, and ask the Lord for his loving forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Pardon the folds of your servants, we pray, O Lord that we, who cannot please you by our own deeds, may be saved through the intercession of the mother of your son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> in the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was hurt because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, Lord, Let 
Let me never be put to shame In your justice set me free Hear me and speedily rescue me According to John. Glory to you, Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've been waiting a long time for this particular day. It all depended on this little lady over here, Sister Margaret, a sister of charity of New York, who was a sculptor, and has a wonderful ability to identify and to create what we have in our minds, what we should help us worship God with the use of these wonderful sculptures. This particular mausoleum was named the Sorrowful Mother because it was shortly after my mother had passed. I realized, you know, that there was a void in my own personal life, like all of you. That void will never totally be filled. But we come here and we seek solace and consolation. And when we do so, we come to this central, central part of the mausoleum and we look up at the sorrowful mother and her face. A woman so very, very human. A woman who experienced all of life unfortunately even the sorrows of life from the time of bringing Jesus to the temple for the purification 
she was told, a sword will pierce your heart. And we are told in scripture that these words she ruminated over and over again, wondering what that meant. She lived that life and she realized. And then when he was around 12, they made the journey of pilgrimage to Jerusalem, to the temple. And as was the Orthodox tradition, the men walked in one group, the women in the other. And of course, leaving the temple confines after being there for prayer, Mary thought the kid was with Joseph, and Joseph thought the kid was with Mary. After a few days' journey, the men and women group got together, and all of a sudden, no Jesus. I'm sure you who are mothers experience the fright in Macy's or God knows where, where all of a sudden your son or daughter disappeared from your sight, and that panic was there. And again, she experienced that grief in her life. Then she saw her son, the great preacher, and I'm sure she was extremely proud of what he did. But some people talked against him, and then that crowd started to grow larger and larger, to the point that they spoke, by and large, against him, and that crowd started to cry out crucify him, that he was a traitor of the state. And so she saw her son crucified. But as the scripture said, she stood under that cross. She did not run away. She bore that grief. She put up with it. She lived through it. In his dying words, because even in is dying. He wanted to take care of her. He says, woman, behold your son. And he gave his mother to the care of St. John. So too, in our lives, we take those scriptures to heart. Frank, having had a loving wife, a beautiful relationship, two wonderful children, and knowing what a caring woman she was, not only for you, but for her two children and her family. That is something you'll always treasure, something that will always be precious. And so, when you look at this statue and that face, you can almost mirror that with your own faces of the grief and the sorrow. But, but, the cross is empty. The dead Christ is not dead anymore. He lives forever. And the promise is there. If we are faithful to the Gospels, if we try to live the Gospel message, yes, yes, we too will have a smile on us face and no more sorrow because he is risen and we will share in that resurrection. That is our hope and that is why we come here to be consoled in our loss but yet always with that thought in the back of our